my first exposure to the good word of God was the emphasis of the word of faith, which I believe is elementary and fundamental, seeing that our God is invincible. As I began to deepen my work with God, the lens of my soul sustained the emphasis of the gospel of the kingdom. And I was looking for a mentor because uh, it was not a common meal in the body of Christ at the time. It was the emphasis of success, motivation, was the glory of the pulpit in those days. So I sought a mentor, I sought an instructor, someone that will add muscle to the skeleton of divine conviction that has been sustained upon my heart. Then, and I sought widely because I'm a researcher. I sought widely among the preachers in in America, preachers in Europe, and I found no other voice with a clear emphasis of the kingdom. Not just, you know, when someone practices what he preaches, there is a glory that is dispensed when the ministry of the world is in view. So I've been in distant learning it's a distant learning option. <laughs> we used to send men to the bookshop to get all the new updates. And because I was uh, in middle management, I had a lot of spare time. And for four years straight, I, I was in a theological school, just drinking, drinking, until I became recalibrated. Hallelujah. So I want to say publicly that we were discipled by your teachings. Yeah. The texture of our conviction, the nature of our tenacity is drawn from the good meat, the strong meat that we found as you dispense the truth of the word of God without compromise. It is that same spirit that led me through my days in the oil sector. And uh, when I turned in my resignation, they rejected it. I had to pray for three months and then present it again. It is possible to win by righteousness. Let us pray. Father, tonight we give you praise. We ask, O God, that you speak in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us. Invade this atmosphere and manifest your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated. So we are students from the distant learning program, and we are many, mostly in the northern part of Nigeria. But it has pleased the Lord to begin to emphasize that kingdom voice again. We are many with different starting points, but we found that alignment in the emphasis that the Lord brought through your life. So, uh, we are your people. Luke chapter 4. As I travel around bearing witness of the resurrection of Jesus from place to place, I realize that there is need for us to analyze the uncertainty in the times. There is need for us to look 
with an analytical mind at the volatility that is descriptive of the reality of this moment and also to find what exactly is the passion that the confusion has created. There is a longing for the supernatural now. And if we want to experience growth in our endeavors, we need to understand what our generation is hungry for. If I'm not mistaken, I looked upon the current analysis of majority religion in the United Kingdom. And the report states that witchcraft is the fastest growing religion in the United Kingdom. If you take, if you are detailed in your analysis, you will find there has been in the last 12 years a rise of false prophets on the continent of Africa. They are in the business of deception. Just like when you registered before you stepped into this conference and maybe there's a column for your phone number, there's a column for your name, that information that you left outside of the door becomes word of knowledge items. So, word of knowledge is no longer by revelation, it's by research. And you'll find a host of people attending to such deceptive quarters. The reason is because there is a hunger for the supernatural. So, we need to look at the desires that have been generated by the volatility of our time. And if we can analyze it properly, we will realize that the chaos is a ladder. Turn, turn your Bible. Let's, let's do Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. There were two basic utensils that Jesus used to prosecute ministry. And that was what was responsible for the kind of announcement that his efforts produced. If at any point in time we are lacking in these two utensils, the hope for growth will be dashed. Luke chapter 4, beginning from verse number 31. Hallelujah. I really want to thank you, sir, for this privilege. great privilege that you have given me to stand here today that I will never forget as long as I live. You know, when you stand before your teacher, that is what I'm experiencing right now. <laughs> the apostolic technocrat himself, you need to have found grace to stand here. Luke chapter 4, verse 31, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art the Holy One of God. And he rebuked them, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, they came out of him and hurt him not. Verse 36 is a commentary. It's a commentary that is descriptive of the wonder that was seen on the faces of the people. And this commentary seems to crystallize the two utensils that was the power behind the ministry of Jesus. And they were all amazed and speak among themselves saying, what a word is this? What a message is this? I was expecting that after that question, the title of the message would have been itemized thereafter. What a message 
is this. And the title of the message was not captured. But this was the object of wonder in his delivery. For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. What a word is this? What a message is this? For with authority and with power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. So Jesus, in his deliverables, normally creates a spectacle. A spectacle that is attractive, a spectacle that is occasioned by the utensils of the kingdom. It will interest us to know that in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when God was talking about the revival that the apostles were supposed to steward, he did not only insist that revival must be stewarded, but he also prescribed to them the pathway of the flow of the revival, that in order for God to be glorified, it must begin in Jerusalem. You know, we have always thought that revival is chaotic and is um, explosive and it's difficult to take inventory of a move of God. <laughs> Jesus said, it must begin at Jerusalem. It, it showed us how the river was supposed to flow from Jerusalem. It will go to Judea. Don't take it anywhere else. There was a very rigid prescription that was given on how the flow of the river should be. If, if you know, if you are in the military and you are about to engage in a war, there is a security briefing that must take place. That's where you ask all your questions. And the generals will come and bring perspective. The moment that meeting ends and it's wartime, there's no question for them. So this is the security briefing meeting. They say, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be witnesses unto me. Not witnesses for me, but unto me. He's not talking about evangelism. He's talking about a situation where Jesus is in court and he needs witnesses to support his case. Now your life is going to be the evidence that will provide witness about Jesus. Our generation doesn't believe that the claims of Jesus are valid. So an accurate functionary that is adequately galvanized by the grace of God will need to come upon the scene to legitimize the, the claims of Jesus. And he says, you will need to receive power to do this. Meanwhile, if I was in this security briefing, are you still with me? Please stay with me, stay with me. If I was in this meeting, I would have called the attention of Jesus. So the fact that it would have been easier for us to exploit other territories, not Jerusalem. Let us start from Samaria. There is no strong philosophy in Samaria. We can infiltrate them, we can colonize them. But who makes converts of Jews? No one. Their religion is too old. And meanwhile, meanwhile, the Jew claims that God appears appeared to them in a group. But the Christian claims that God appeared to him in his quiet time. So when you bring your encounter from your bedroom, the Jew will not accept it because the encounters they had, their ancestors were encountered in a group. Are you with me? So, it says you need to confront Jerusalem. I would have asked Jesus. Because this particular scenario I read from the book of Luke chapter 4 was in Galilee. If, if you see you have a rough sketch of the map of Israel in your head, I know you do. I need to show you that Israel had an international part and a national part. 
It had a liberal part and it had a traditional nucleus. Now, because of the topography of Israel, the foot, the left foot of the map is full of Baltic rock. So if you are coming from Africa, the only route you have to navigate is towards the abode of Zabulon and Naphtali. That's Galilee. Galilee is the international side. That's where idolatry comes from. That's where the smuggling um, necromancy and wizardry and witchcraft. It comes from the international side. But Jerusalem is in the traditional national side that holds the key to culture and custom. You can't come there with a new philosophy and claim to hold the ground. Jesus said, the only way the father will be pleased is when this move is stewarded from Jerusalem, Judea. You will discover that the Jesus, the fans he had were Galileans. It was not the Galileans that opted for his death. Forever they will fight so that he will be spared. But you see, it was the Judeans that crucified him. And that was the same place Jesus is saying that you will need to start from. So if I, if, if I happen to be in this apostolic briefing meeting, I would have raised my hand. Will we, we win? Because these days, the place to pitch and to cite a ministry is a place that lends itself to ease. A place where you can exploit, exploit the fault lines and establish yourself. But Jesus did not give them that option. He said, everything will begin at Jerusalem. And the spiritual capital he was making available to actualize that intent was what? Power. Power. That's the resource. Power. Power is the basis of the universal ad advertisement, generational advertisement of this of the of the truth of the gospel. So at any point in time when we are deficient in this utensil, it will be difficult to create a spectacle that will attract a philosophical age like ours. So the Bible says that he came into the synagogue as was his custom on the Sabbath days, and he began to teach. And there was a remark that his teaching had a texture that was different from that of the Pharisees. And just to illustrate the, this difference, a, 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 a typical case was raised about a man that came into the synagogue to partake of the deliverance of God. And Jesus was the teacher that day. And this guy never did anything that suggested that he was out of, he was mentally sick, he had mental health issues. But Jesus introduced something into his ministry that triggered a reaction. And an entity spoke through the vocal cord of this man. It, it was, it was, I want you to see how unsettled Jesus made the service. The service was classical, it was pious. It was sanctimonious. It was sacramental until Jesus introduced a utensil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like we are sitting now. So fine. The way the alignment of people's style is just in place. But if we introduce some issues, <laughs> you might find Otherwise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we went to Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe is a nation. I've seen that in Zimbabwe. I've seen it in Botswana. I've seen it in South Africa. The hunger those people have is much more than our hunger. And that's why anything that looks prophetic passes. Because the people are hungry and they have not been discipled. 
So you can come and say, ah, God appeared to you in the night. And you, brought, you, you bring palm oil and bitter cola. That this is the medium through which the power of God will be dispensed. You will find people that are interested. So we now that have the word, we are threshing wheat in hiding. When that which we have is supposed to be made public because the, the church in our generation needs to be discipled quickly. In some, in some quarters, in some nations, you will see that Christianity is mixed with idolatry in a most effective way. And a pastor of the church is the one that will come to take the um, ceremony for ancestral ven venerations. That is, he has finished church. Now, if they want to do uh, family rites and speak to the ancestors, it's still a pastor that will come and take. So he doubles as a priest for, of, of necromancy and is effective on the pulpit. So this mixture will remain until we we'll introduce this utensil. So Jesus So um, the summary is what we have in verse 36. And I'd like to take it again because I would like us to draw a chart where we we'll divide, put power on one end and put authority on one end and do an analysis of both so that we can have adequate insight into the matters of which we speak. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. All right, so draw a chart and put power in one column, put authority in the other column, and we'll use the scriptures to understand the differences between power and authority. Then when we understand it to a certain level, because the kingdom of God is not in word, we would need to illustrate these matters with the utensil of illustration in the kingdom of God. You know, I was a teacher at some point, and if you want to teach biology, you will need to illustrate some of your concepts by use of a diagram. But in, if we are talking about kingdom things, the aid we need, illustration can only be accomplished by aid of power, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says that the kingdom of God is not in word. Words are weak to carry effectively the weight that is entrenched in the kingdom of God. So even when we do our words with words and we teach and preach, um, we will still need to use the utensil of the kingdom to illustrate kingdom things, which is what? Uh, it will interest you to know that there is something that if Satan can, he will effectively hide. And that's the result of the manifestation of power when demons are displaced. It reveals the superiority of the kingdom of God over the kingdom of darkness in blatant daylight illustration. If Satan has the opportunity, he will hide that. So that there will be confusion whether or not uh, God is actually more powerful than the devil. So if we cannot see power exercise, there will still be confusion about the supremacy of darkness over light. Supremacy of light over darkness. That confusion is going to be there. Because Satan traffics with great intimidation. And he uses skills of deception to exaggerate his capacity. If you have not seen light, the power of God through the kingdom of light manifests itself and show that Satan's capacity is miniature. Then you are likely to accept the deception of darkness when it comes around. Number one, under the power, power session. 
Number one, power is gift-based. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. All right. Behold, this is verse 19 of Luke chapter 10. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There is an insurance policy that is attached to your use of power. Because there is a likelihood for the elements that are displaced to intend to launch a counterattack to Jesus said. Don't be afraid to deploy it. Because nothing shall by any means hurt you. The pastor was trying to educate me and he says that... Uh, he notices that I'm always against the devil and that's not his own style of ministry. That, that if you leave Satan alone, he'll leave you alone. <laughs> so he doesn't cast out devils. He doesn't do all of that. And it will surprise you to know that most of the people that bear the title prophet, they don't cast out devils. It's a new trend. You know, you do any other thing, you raise money, you but leave them. <laughs> he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hey, somebody in the congregation is saying, ah, this topic you are preaching is only for pastors. We are in the economic war front and we don't seem to see demons there. Now, I need to clear your doubts quickly because Jesus in his presentation in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 16, he, he says, these signs will follow them that believe. So they are supposed to be indicators that show that we are in vital connection with the Christ. And in the eyes of Jesus, you need power to live natural life. So it's part of the equipment that is made available to you just because you became a believer in Jesus. So uh, right there in your office, I don't know about yours, but in... <laughs> Hallelujah. Right there in your office, uh, you need power. I know you don't believe. Let me tell you a little about my work life. I was supervising a particular station sometime, and I met a brother in that place, who was part of the facility that I was supervising. And he called me by 2 a.m. and said that they just brought something and they are burying it in the office now. Uh, so when you come in the morning, watch yourself. So I came in the morning, he took me there. There was one part of the facility where there was fresh cement. He said he wasn't able to look at the thing, but... Uh, he doesn't know if it's a corpse, but something was buried there. Are you with me? Yes. Now, that office, I know you'll not believe this, but that office is an office where my, my uh, office overlooks the operation island. So sometimes on the operation island, fire just begins to burn, physical fire. The staff are used to it now. And in that industry, if you see fire, you are supposed to run to the muster point. That is the drill. But I think those guys are aware of that fire, that the reactions that take place on the ground will produce fire for ventilation. So nobody runs from that fire. Even though we are supposed to be at the muster point, the fire alarm is supposed to go out and everybody is supposed to leave the facility. At least I saw that fire twice appear. Then it will burn with intensity. Then it will disappear. I saw it twice myself. And there was one that came. That one, even the people that were used to the fire, ran away. So we all ran out. Are you with me? And that is supposed to be a secular workplace. But it's rigged with darkness. And you want to thrive in that environment without your own backup system. 
I think you are a joke. Most of my colleagues came down with strange illness, cancers. Because the moment they offer you shop money and you collect, wait for five years and see what happens to you. Now, if you are not, if you are not willing to win by righteousness, you will not even be alive to play ball in the days to come. It's a strange place. Very strange place. And you need to be armed to the teeth to survive the wilds thereof. So in the eyes of Jesus, in order for you to be normal, you need power to prosecute daily life, not to go for crusades. May the Lord give us understanding. According to the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 19, power is gift-based. Jesus saw that we need power, this investment of power, and he is giving us lavishly because he knows that you will meet with serpents. He knows that you will meet with what? With scorpions. Meanwhile, these are metaphors. What exactly is the implication of this metaphor that is found in this scripture? He said, I'm giving you power because you will need to tread on serpents. You will need to tread on scorpions. So let me start with scorpions. I don't know if there's anybody here that has been stung by a scorpion before because it happened to me some time ago. And then I traced the scorpion and I saw how small it was. And the tail that inflicted so much pain on me, I saw it. It was negligible in size. But it carried so much energy. Now, um, I have proof from a few scriptures to show that when Jesus spoke about scorpions, he was actually referring to witchcraft. And uh, that tail of the scorpion that is a household of a lot of energy is suggestive of the fact that witchcraft is the department in the kingdom of darkness that holds satanic power. You know, power is the ability to what? To do work. Ah, you're not with me. You're not with me. Oh, okay, we should forget about witchcraft. You know, it's, we started on the wrong note. <laughs> I was, I was preaching in South Africa, and one woman rose up and said, I'm the serpent from the river of Zimbabwe. And she began to come and to tell me that you're already a dead man for, for attempting to age, and you could see the vengeance. Now, I wasn't going there to contend with the, the serpent of Zimbabwe, but Jesus knew we would meet scorpions. So he says... Uh, when you meet scorpions, I will prepare you beforehand by giving you power, equipment, because you, you cannot be so smart as to escape scorpions. I know you are a gentleman and you like things on the gentle way. It, it's too late. Scorpions are around. Uh, it's too late. So, witchcraft is the department that holds satanic power. And if you go, if you check, if you check, um, can, we, can we move to the book of um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16? You know, that lady that has the spirit of divination. Can you click on divination? Find the, the pilot number on your lexicon and trace it to the Greek word. You will find that is Pluton. It is from the word Puton that we have the English word Python because it is believed, the Greeks believe that uh, the snake is, the, is a creature that is illustrative of intelligence. Are you there? Good. So when we are talking about serpents, we are talking about divination. It is divination that gives access to spiritual information, spiritual knowledge through the spirit of error. 
Jesus is saying that you need power because you are going to find men that have been equipped by divination. Prophets of divination, soothsayers, have given them prophecies. And they believe it the same way you believe the word of God that you heard. They have faith in that which soothsayers have declared and they are willing to pursue it to the end. So you find people with a lot of confidence in the wrong area. Huh? You will find them in those secular areas. You, you are the only one that does business with figures. People do it with serpents now. You are not going to be any match if you don't have a spiritual dimension. And Jesus is saying, you need power. Are you there? So you're saying you are going to meet serpents and it's expected if you are adequately equipped for you to trample on serpents. So if we come to church and we don't have testimonies of when we trampled on serpents, we made nonsense of witchcraft that came against us, not because we went to look for them, but in our line of duty, in our business, in our everyday activity, we were confronted by people that were galvanized by satanic power and we let loose the superior handle of the grace of God that was upon our lives and subdued what Satan had to offer. If that advertisement, we need to put God on display. That advertisement, <laughs> that ad advertisement, even if the person, <laughs> I need to share a testimony before. I, I think I, what did I do that created so much tension? I just taught the scriptures. I just taught the scriptures. And the statement that caused problem was 12 minutes. I addressed an issue in the body of Christ. And that 12 minutes went around the world. And uh, I was sleeping when the news that I was in trouble, that, <laughs> that so many people have ganged up against me because of this thing. Meanwhile, what I said was my calling. I, I was licensed by Jesus to say that. Maybe when he called you, he told you, comfort my people. That's not what he told me. He said, uproot. He said, uproot, destroy. Yes. Throw down. Pull down before he said, build and plant. So I, I read that it's more of a destructive instrument. You need to destroy first before you build well. So, and it was not as if I was even out to destroy anything. I just made a statement for 12 minutes and God went and destroyed things. So I was in trouble. This trouble was so intense that the people involved, the people that gang up, that they were going to fight me, that they were going to put money together to fight me. They, I was to preach in a certain country and they went there and wrote a letter to the government that they should not give me visa, that I'm an occultic pastor. So they now called, so they minited to their own DSS. That the DSS people should listen to three of my messages that I preached internationally and see if there was any evidence that I had the capacity to destabilize a nation. So they now gave the tapes to a man that was an unbeliever. And the guy listened to the first tape, listened to the second tape, listened to the third tape. He asked for two more, they gave him. <laughs> listened to the fourth tape, listened to the fifth tape, and then he gave his life to Christ. <laughs> and the recommendation he gave was, was, was powerful. Such that by the time we arrived, the immigration people, when they identified us, they took me somewhere. They said, you sit down. I didn't even see the people that stamped my passport. They just took me. But it's okay. Oh. Meanwhile, the visa we had was supposed to become effective the next day. So it means we came before we were supposed to come. But that did not matter again because there was a recommendation that came from that man. Now... The, those, mm, I don't know what the man saw on the tape. 
I don't know what, what anything it was, it was strong enough to bring his soul to repentance. Jesus said we need equipment because you are going to meet serpents. So just like scorpions, witchcraft holds the power dimension of the kingdom of darkness, serpents, divination holds the knowledge dimension of the kingdom of darkness, and then sorcery holds the wisdom. Uh, it, it's in the book of Acts that we're going to see the sorcery aspect holds the wisdom dimension of the kingdom of darkness. Those are the things that we hold sway if we do not have the capacity to tread on them. Sorcery, we hold sway. Witchcraft, we hold sway. And statistics carries it that witchcraft is the fastest growing religion in the United Kingdom now. It means these are the days where talk and have measures will not work. We will need to introduce the utensils that extends the frontiers of the kingdom of God, namely power and authority. So we have seen that power is gift-based. You don't do anything to qualify for it. Jesus made it available because he knew that we need power to prosecute normal life. We also have Acts chapter 1 verse 8 as a support for that claim that power is gift based. Jesus never said we have to do something in order to receive power. Power is bequeathed to us as a gift. You may do something to release it, but to receive it, it is gift based. Now, relationship. Authority is relationship based. That's the difference. So if you see a man walking in the authority of the kingdom of God, it means that he has labored to develop a relationship with God. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. He ordained the 12. He established the 12 and their job description was to be with him. Do you see the word he used for preach? It's might. The preaching aspect, which is the aspect of representing him for which we will need authority, is a probability. But the actual assignment is to be with him. So any man that has not been with him cannot be a carrier. He will not send such a man. That man has not learned his ways enough to be sent to represent him. In order for God to send you to represent him, either in business, send you to represent him in politics, send you to represent him in ministry, send you to represent him in the life of your wife, you will need to be with him sufficiently well to learn his ways so that you can represent his interests anywhere you find yourself. It's just like, I don't know how many of you have ever been to a restaurant before, and you come to a restaurant, you find a waiter, maybe with a bow tie, smiling. And then he comes and presents the menu and tries to find out what you want and miss the assortment of options that are on the menu. Then you choose what you want, then he goes and to the kitchen trying to get your choice of item. But you see, even if you didn't come to the restaurant, the guy is being paid to wait. His, his assignment is waiting. And even if you are not there, he's still waiting. It is because you came that he was deployed to serve you. All right, that means we must learn how to wait before him. It is in the atmosphere of waiting that we can pick up the frequency of that which he may want done. Then we are released with the equipment needed to fast track, to facilitate that which he wants us to do. But you see, the original duty, the original assignment is to be with him. 
It's when you attempt, maybe you have not tried it in a long time. When you attempt to lock your door and say, it's Saturday, I just want to be with you. Then you'll find out that there, there's a haste that is in your soul. That haste will make you pray, but the prayer is not effective because you want to leave. The first hurdle you'll find in order to be with him is the hurdle of overcoming the haste that is locked on your soul. You can come for a prayer meeting. If you came for a prayer meeting with the haste, you might actually endure the prayer meeting, but you were not connected because you were under the influence of that haste that was locked on your soul. So you were not actually with him. You need to overcome that haste. When you overcome that haste, it, it means that what you came for is not nothing else but him. After studying my Bible for a while, I found out that God can be known. That the Spirit of God can speak to my recreated human spirit and express his will, express his pleasure. And if I stay long enough, I'll be able to discern the movements of God in my spirit and know what is on the mind of God. And in fact, I consider that to the greatest privilege that we have in our redemption. But we are in a hurry. So we cannot hear his voice. We cannot tap into his wisdom because we have strategies lined out. We have analyzed the situation and we know how to engage. So many options to life that come to us. All right? You know the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. This is one of the scriptures that reveals how God designed man. He designed man as a creature of prayer. This is the design. This is one of those few scriptures in the Bible where Jesus decides to unveil the dream that was on the heart of God when God says, let us make man. One of those scriptures. The man was designed to be a creature of prayer. That's how he was designed to. He's condemned to prayer. Meanwhile, if you have found a way of living that does not put pressure on you to exercise your spirit in prayer, in prayer, you have found how to malfunction because you are no longer operating according to prescription. You became intelligent and discovered how to get by without operating according to your design. You are malfunctioning because there is no prayerless in the Bible. It's either you are praying or you are fainting. You are on life support. You are surviving on the last strand of the mercy of God. People will do everything else except commune with God. Except find how to connect in the spirit. And most times we we'll rush to God just because they are precious from life. There is, there is an attack. Something shakes you to your foundation. Then you begin to look for the horns of the altar. You see, it is easier for you to develop a relationship with God. And when you call him in the day of storm, he will rise. He will not leave you. He will not deny what he has with you in the secret place. But many have found how to operate at that in such a way that is inconsistent with pattern. Meanwhile, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So men do not are not designed to faint. I pray you will migrate in a moment of time. You will take a decision for migration. In a moment of time, in a moment of time, the communion began. I began to learn it. It was very difficult to stay focused on God alone because you will remember you bought yogurt. 
your mind will wander. Then you catch your mind, you bring it back. Say, yeah, there's you got there, but I came for you. I came, I came. You begin to speak, speak, speak. Then, then, then his hold on your God will go. Then you focus again. Then you want to move. Then you have strength. How strength. How strength. Then you will see that if you are not in alignment, spirit, soul, and body, your prayers do not carry power. Your soul is somewhere else because it has not been trained. You will discover that it's easier to build muscles than to train your mind to stay in a supportive position to support your spirit. It's easier to build muscles. It's easier to go to the gym and flatten your stomach. What, what are you doing consciously to build the relationship with him? It's from the resources of this relationship that you have built, that your prosperity is tied to. Because the Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You don't even need big ideas to prosper. It's just say, Holy Spirit say, buy this house. And you, and you buy it. Then after four years, say, sell now. I don't think you need to be so intelligent to be able to do that. Sell now. Say, okay. A disease is coming. Begin to manufacture this thing. They will need it then. If you can hear the voice of God, you can prosper. So I will invest in ensuring that I can still hear him. I will invest in it. I will labor. I will discipline myself so that my spirit will be in alignment. Are you still with me? Oh, you are not with me. I say, are you here? So, authority is relationship based. I, I think I will stop there for the night. Let us, with pastors for our mission, who pray in tongues for five minutes so that we can. That's why you give that exhortation about the atmosphere. The atmosphere where seals are unlocked is the atmosphere of prayer and of worship. The spirit realm is not far in terms of distance. The spirit realm is here, but it sits in another dimension that you cannot access in the flesh. It is only the Holy Ghost that can open that realm. So the Bible says that we have not received a spirit which is of this world, but a spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. So there are things that are freely given to us, but they are sealed. You can access them with human intelligence. You can access them because you attend a lecture. You can't access them because you read a book. You can only access them because the Spirit of God hands it out. It is always original because you need to seek it out. Are you, are you still here? Now, what we want to do is to unlock the realm of the Spirit. We want to unlock it in 25 minutes. Are you there? Okay, let's reduce it. We we'll unlock it uh, 12 minutes. 12 minutes. I want you to see practically how long it takes to access the mind of God. Let's do it as a congregation. How, how long? Is it, is it time? Is it time that is the issue? Because in order for you to know how to wield your sword and to angulate and align your spirit, you must... Train yourself to pray for long. If you don't train yourself to pray for long, in the day of trouble, you will not be able to find the handle of the horns of the altar. Train yourself to pray for long. If you cannot, if pastor says, okay, let us pray for 10 hours and you can't handle it, I don't think you are ready for life. Ten hours. It should, it's, it, that's, that's the basic unit. Ten hours of, of praying in tongues. Praying in tongues for ten hours. In fact, you will not even pass on that me if you cannot pray for ten hours. 
It means you have other gods. You have other things you trust in. Do not explode your spirit. It means it, you'll be preaching psychology. Do not explode him. As astronauts explore space, that's how we are called to explore God and to bring things from God. So you must learn how to ride in the spirit. Learn how to ride in the spirit. Learn how to ride. We went, as we were taught to win by righteousness, we went to stop corruption. In our own little way. At least it will not pass through our table. Then we discover that it's a web and you need to bring your own to connect other people. So when you say no, other people are starved. So all the people will come with you, come for you, they will come with the things that they have. Oh, so if you don't know how to pray for long, don't even try it. Don't try it. The, uh, the corruption you are fighting is a spirit. Uh, and there's a place where they wield the handle of that spirit. I've been to offices where people die at work and they only die on Thursday. Okay, the people that were dying, I didn't know them, so it didn't matter to me until my friend now died on Thursday. So, okay. How are we going to handle this? Holy Spirit, how are we going to handle it? So we had to be coming to the office by 6 a.m. in the morning to pray around the office. I was supposed to come by 8, and I'm a senior staff, so I can come by 10. But we come by 6. Pray, 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 until the hand of death was stopped. It was not the people that asked us to pray. It's my duty as a representative of the kingdom of God. Do you know how many years they refused to promote me because we stood for righteousness? Years! And when God wanted to do it, all of my promotions were restored and the monies that I was supposed to be paid were, that's how I built a house. They were saving for me. <laughs> so the beast I'm talking about I have I've been in combat with that beast and I'm not telling you what I have not seen we are going to spend a moment just five minutes to speak in tongues I want you to see how easy it is to open the veil do I have your permission Oh, hallelujah. So give me, raise that your volume. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like Elisha. I need a minstrel in order to be able to yield adequately. We're going to pray in tongues for, for two minutes. Forget about, if you came with your wife, forget about your wife. Let us rise in the Holy Ghost. There is a generation of power that must come in these days to be a witness of his resurrection. Forget about your neighbor as we glide in the spirit, exercising yourself in the Holy Ghost. We are creatures of power. We were forged by power. We have been given power. Isaimo se cobrisco velamina, pahobria sin dele, brisco feta kunda beli no sonteria, ma brisco fela bosa i capente, preso fila mandolia ma hasatebi, escufa lambra a bais compela sila, esquila bon seketando bolo. I kabremi na suvri asekadi, amai kompesko fela baburi asika bantamina, abre koseke labro konsi la bantomia, yamo sabil, yamo sabil, braski fomenali, shamai kompele, shiva habresko fetamina kuria, 
Prendo skentome zabilato i capresco fita bantoria aprisco fa pesi aprisco feta bugolate aprisco fendomina cadia aprisco fantesi aprisco fatua balata in capemina santo i capemina culia baseli oh we give your prayer we give you praise. I fear see cobra minaite. Iso sel abresco filato sa taminala. Bray competa si cabele abraske fonte mina zuzela. I cabe mina cobre satula bakabala baboria. Esisa len copento mi alai copresco filata minala. Abresco fala bonsa i cabai competi a manza bela cusi ke basantoria. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mahabrasketo bamba hasketa bri fa esko bela kilo banzeli amezo zela kusketa bresko fa mina itamo oli aseka bonda. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So I see in the spirit, I see a lady. And this lady, I saw um, a garment come from heaven. And it was in the likeness of linen. And it came upon this lady. And the Lord began to speak to me and to say uh, that this lady has the calling of a prophet. That if she can give herself to intercession, once and again she'll be overwhelmed with the presence of God. And the Lord will cause her to hear, see, like a prophet. So that lady there has a prophetic calling. But she's overwhelmed. She's overwhelmed by situations and circumstances such that she cannot turn her face to the Lord. As long as she doesn't do that, there are dimensions of empowerment that is in the Holy Ghost that she will never see. Oh, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one that you want to equip with the gift, oh my God, is coming strong on you. It's coming so strong. You'll be able, you'll be able to make the lame to walk. The, yes. Oh my. So there's someone receiving the gift of healing and the gift of healing is it's radical, it's strong. It's a strong anointing. Uh, oh my God. In the next 17 seconds, in the next 17 seconds, the hand of the Lord will come upon that functionary of the kingdom. God wants you to become his instrument. And the hand of God begins to, it, it comes stronger upon your life. It comes stronger upon your life. It will weigh heavily upon you. It will weigh heavily upon you. Grace. Grace is multiplied on your life. In the name of Jesus. I see three trumpets. But we will not go there for now. Let me explain. Power is noisy. So, it may not be possible for us to have orderly services every day. Because sometimes power can inter in intercept the proceedings. And it becomes noisy. If we will allow the Holy Spirit liberty, He will shake things up. Sometimes you are not even able to preach. The anointing comes so strong and God doesn't even need you behind the pulpit to take your Bible, go sit down. Then he begins to minister to you. For hours. That's how power is. It's noisy. It's explosive. It's disruptive. With authority. It's judicial. Authority change, changes things first from the realm of the spirit before you see the manifestation in the natural. Are you with me? Now let me 
see how the Holy Spirit will want me to demonstrate authority. Because the Bible says they were amazed. It means they saw Jesus move in power. They also saw Jesus move in authority and it was practical. So can you help me as we pray in tongues for two minutes? Let me know how he wants me to illustrate the utensil of authority. Just two minutes in tongues. Just two minutes. Just two minutes. I saw me as I saw you. Confessa ma cumbre. Mahaso sela brasqueta bila. Ukle pres vabena unke ma ambala kus avala teli. Minomon sikle pres ifo samina ito kumbali. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right. If you use glasses to read, remove it for a moment. Remove it, put it somewhere. Lay your hands on your eyes. I would say, give a command. Then we'll check them again. You use glasses to read. Maybe you've been using glasses for a long time. Just... Lay your hand on your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you glory. Your hands on your eyes. Don't remove them. Now, Lord, I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirit, be bound. Blinding spirit, be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. Now I command the eyes. See. In Jesus name. Remove your hands from the eyes. Try reading. Anyone that finds that your eyes are clear, you stand on your feet. Conduct a personal investigation. Now, authority is judicial, just like I said. It displaces, if you finish your check. Meanwhile, if something happens, don't keep quiet. And if nothing happens, say nothing. If something happens, don't keep quiet. Just stand on your feet. So I want to know, okay, I don't, there are ushers that are standing. I don't, I'm confused. So if you stand on your feet and you are standing because of this request I'm making, can you raise your hand so that I will, just wave. Okay, we have one, we have two. Okay, brother, can you come? There's an improvement in your side. Come. So we'll take, we'll use these two testimonies as for analysis purposes. You, do you wear glasses? Yes. How long, how long have you been wearing the uh, glasses you have? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Uh, what was the prescription for? Is it uh, long-sightedness? Short- long-sighted. Wait, meanwhile, there's someone uh, that is short-sighted that the Lord healed and the person is still sitting. You were short-sighted for a long time, but you are healed now. Check your eyes. Yes, so long-sightedness? Okay, so what, what, what's the meaning of long-sightedness? It means you can see far, you but you can't see, see close. you can't see close. Yes. So you mean you can read this your message? Yes. You can read it now? Yes. You couldn't read it before? Without the glasses. Couldn't read without the glasses. Can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. Give, give the mic away to the next brother. Lord, let this change this, that he has seen be permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are released. Thank you. So for how long have you 
use glasses over 10 years 10 years is it a situation of short-sightedness or long-sightedness short-sighted short-sighted so you tried your eyes yes and there's an improvement yes hallelujah Lord, let it be permanent in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, um, the reason why you're clapping is not because of the preacher. Okay? Uh, can we give glory to Jesus? I was told that in London... You can't have a big congregation because people are paid on an hourly basis. So except you have something to give that is more than the money that we make. Yeah. So in that situation, uh, we need to give them a reason for coming to church. So we located the lady that was born sick with cell. Prayed for Go to your doctor. She was born in London, raised in London. So there, there's a doc, there's an, a hospital in London that has been managing her case since birth. Then she went there, and the test refused to come out because they were doing the test many times. They came back and took blood again and went and tested and took blood and tested. Wrote a strange report and said, "Well, we are not seeing. It's either we have a case of impersonation." Because, in fact, she was referred to Oxford for further analysis and for them to find out why she's no longer a patient. I saw the report from Oxford myself. It, it's two-paged. But the lady said you will be bored reading it. This is where you should read. The one, the Oxford people said, we don't find any evidence to show that you are a sickle cell patient anymore. So we now brought that medical report and read it. Someone, SS, and they didn't tell me whether it was AS that it now is or AA. There is a change here from Oxford has testified. Uh, everybody came to church because they want a miracle. So this last meeting, we had about 1,500 people in the same London that they say. We can feel, you don't believe me. I said we can fill this place up in two weeks. Two weeks. We need the utensils. We'll continue tomorrow. I think I have a session tomorrow. So we'll continue studying about power and authority. 